Round 10 means we look at some famous number 10s and also famous round 10 moments. And we start with arguably the greatest forward that the game's ever seen, and that's John Coleman. Unfortunately, we didn't see him for long enough, but being able to, you know, Luke Jackson, our great guy who, who finds all the clips for us, got this vision of John Coleman. They say at Windy Hill, the fans used to go from one end, and then when Coleman moved to the other goal square, they used to walk around to the other. That's how special this guy was. His record of 537 goals, uh, when he, uh, he didn't even get to 100 games. So he, he was a super player. Two premierships as a, as a coach and two premierships as a player. And I think it was a four-week knee injury, which uh, actually ended his career. That's all it was. But uh, he never played again off the back of that. Uh, such was yeah. the medical... Uh, probably how they looked after players at the time. but uh, I think he, he died quite young too, yeah, he did. I think. Yeah, he did, in yeah. his 50s perhaps. And uh, he ran a pub at Hastings. Yeah. And Dramana, I think, as well, down that region. Yeah, I thought yeah. it might have been there, yeah. yeah. Mm, yeah. Um, I remember Lou Richards spoke so fondly of him. Um, yeah. Thought he was a terrific bloke and obviously a champion player there. So you're following in some great footsteps, Lordo. Um, well, Carl Dittrich. Now, uh, here's a man still up around Swan Hill Way. Look at the blonde bombshell. And what a magnificent player he was there, the number 10. Let me just read some of his stats for you. 285 games, nearly 200 goals, just one shy for St Kilda in Melbourne. He was St Kilda's BNF in 68. Uh, 73 Melbourne BNF, St Kilda captain, Melbourne captain coach in 79 and also 80. And look, I haven't got the stats, but did appear at the tribunal a few <laughs> yeah. times. Um, but having said that, he backed it up with some brilliant on-field efforts. He uh, really was a, a man for the times. And right to the very end, went out with a blaze of glory in the physical side of his game. Um, something overlooked with Kevin Sheedy often is he's playing side, a famous number 10, and we know he had four premierships as a coach of Essendon, but the ability he had as a player, 251 games, he also managed 91 goals, despite being that back pocket player, uh, a three-time premiership player, the 1976 Richmond Best and Fairest winner, Richmond Team of the Century member, Richmond Hall of Fame. Yeah, look, the coaching side of him ended up overtaking the, the narrative around Kevin Sheedy, but uh, it's a Is very it proud Dave football career he's had as well. Did he introduce the rocket hand pass? He had that uh, that, mm. that style of handball that was um, that was his. To, uh, before to that, it was a floating sort of over, and yeah. then he said he changed it to the rocket. He changed the. You're right, Brownie, like, and yeah. you saw how good his handball was in yeah. the, those clips as well. And what was it? Was it the Tommy Hafey quote directed at him about a, a such and such back, back pocket, pocket plumber? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I reckon Scott Pendlebury may eclipse Brent Harvey as the AFL VFL games record holder by the time it's done. He's showing no signs of slowing down. So he needs 66 more games to overtake Boomer Harvey on 432. And the way that he's playing, I don't see any reason why he can't do that. Plays in all positions. Midfield obviously is a star, but has gone to half back. Now can play forward and the skill level of this player is amazing. So his record is as good as you're going to see. He's got the six All-Australians. He's got the five best and fairest. But is he in the conversation even this year for best Australian? Oh, sorry, All-Australian? Yeah, well, and Jared Healy, who I work with, made a great point. He's never been All-Australian captain and he thinks he would be a very worthy All-Australian captain. But with the best and fairest record as well, 15 times top three. Like, yeah, it's just, uh, it, I mean, it's legendary sort of stuff, isn't it? And I think he's such a pro in terms of his fitness levels well, that's the thing. and what he's, what he's willing to do. He, he's going to lengths that other players aren't. That's why he can play another couple of years. And he can rejuvenate himself at the half back and go and mm. play there for another three seasons. So, yeah, I think he's very likely to overtake that record. We'll move off uh, famous number 10 Guernseys to round 10 moments, and uh, it's hard to go past this one. Uh, Malcolm Blyde. Uh, I, I could play this every single week and not get <laughs> sick of it. And he'd already kicked two goals in the previous five minutes to, to give them a chance. Now, they're behind on the siren. As how we far know, out, Damo? 85 metres, Brownie. Watch how far it goes. It goes into row 23. <laughs> row 23, Brownie. So you're saying yep. it went 105. Went yep. 20 metres past. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever it went, Brownie. <laughs> Ask Malcolm. It's, I think it's up to 97. <laughs> it's, um, nah, it's, it's, it's iconic, that moment. And, uh, and I'm glad it was captured in a time when not all matches were Have broadcast. Have you ever done your top 10 players? Like, your personal top 10 best ever players? Dacos Brothers. Bond. I, I, Look, Mel Malcolm Blight would be in it. I know. Yeah. Uh, so I yeah. want to set you the challenge yeah. to do that because you've got a great lens on the history of the game. I'd be interested to see where that lands. What's it based on, mate? Damo's best. My favourite. Yeah, I know that. But the just be favourite or... The, the best players that he has ever seen, top ten. You'd have, well, you'd have Blue Matthews on top, surely. I'd have Keith Grigg in there too. Yeah. Hey, Brownie, I want to get serious here with you. Around 10, 2005, one of the most horrific things ever happened to someone on a footy field. And this oh, was don't show it. you with, um, when Michael Whelan fell yep. across your leg. Oh. How long did it take, sort of the pain initially, and how long did it take you to get over this injury? 
I reckon the, the pain was there for a good two years. So I think I came back too early. Um, initially, when I first broke it, I, I, I didn't really feel it. So I think the body, the doctor said that shock takes over your body and you didn't feel it. Um, when they went, took me down to the rooms and because the bones had overlapped, and Dr. Greg Hickey had to pull the bone to realign my leg to be the same size. That's when it really hurt and you knew something was uh, drastically wrong. But um, I don't think I was ever the same player. My lateral movement was gone after that. It was smashed into about nine or ten pieces, the surgeon said. So it was a, it was a long road back. Um, what, about, what about above the shoulders? Like, how did it affect you? Uh, I remember coming back and playing in, in just in practice matches and, mm. and being worried about going into a contest that it, it, it might affect or hit my legs so definitely uh, the mental side of it was just as bad as a physical but you got back for the, the, ne the first round of the next season first despite, round of the despite next it season. being a round 10 break and in pain um, yeah. and that was my own fault I came back too early because I wanted to prove a point and it was a point that I probably shouldn't have proved and then played three games and then I missed the next 11 or 12 again and then another 12 the next season with a right. with a fracture in the same spot and I suppose too like any player who gets seriously injured you know your, your mum and dad would have been watching yeah everybody yeah. was watching yeah. so um, and they replayed it over and over on on the channel 9 there were, mm. I had letters of people saying that they actually fainted by watching it oh um, it was horrible I was yeah. on the boundary that night it was horrible yeah. mm. and horrible. I was flying too mm. and Kano uh, famous Hutto call this one yeah 13 Lordo uh, I'm interested to see if Buddy would be in your top 10 all time uh, demo but this is yeah down in Tassie and um, what a player he has been so I guess unique in the way that he's done it I mean it's not terrific overhead was he by any stretch but the way that he can kick his goals in multiple ways um, and this was just an absolute day out and a terrific call by Hutto. I was in Tassie for that it was just a freakish day from Buddy in his absolute prime uh, TJ we've run out of time but Plugger also kicked the 1300th goal and broke the re all time record in round 10 uh, in, in, of that year where against Collingwood on Mel Michael at the SCG. And Gordon Coventry's record yes. to that point of 1299 goals yeah. being broken on that yeah. day. And I'll tell you what, if you're going to compile your top 10 favourite players, we should at some point do your top 10 favourite commentators of all time because I think Hutto would be up there. Yeah, he would be up there. Right up there. I'll put Lou Richards at number one, but I'm biased, of course. Mm. But